Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Due to the negative propaganda against the Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it has become imperative upon us to spread the message of the Quran, inshallah. Therefore, Al Hikmat kindly requests your support to pledge and sponsor a hundred thousand Quran drives on CDs. Join us sponsoring Qurans on CDs for free distribution fee subhanallah for Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide. You can also sponsor on behalf of family members and relatives that have passed away as sadaqah jariyah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Become an Al Hikmat AAA member and get discounts from businesses worldwide. By becoming a member, you will receive a free copy of Al Hikmat magazine and other publications. Emails on current events recent videos on Al Hikmat TV, YouTube, lectures, interviews, and much more. You can contact Al Hikmat Services at 954-986-0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. We pray in Salah, right? Well, you see brothers and brothers fighting for money and property. Sisters, brothers, fathers, children. Look at our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 1400 years ago, he said, I don't fear that you guys will do shirk, assign partners to Allah. But my fear is you will envy your brother and your sister for worldly things. When they have these worldly accomplishments, you will envy it. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikma TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praises are due to All praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, 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 Allah. Wafiq Transport Limited. Contact 715-6463 or 673-0152. Located at 86 Ornfield Road, Kerapi, Chaima. Services include vacuum, septic services, sock pile, sand gravel, etc. Trailers, heavy equipment for sale such as flatbeds, drop decks, container trailers, and lots more. Southern Hatcheries Limited. Suppliers of both live and processed broiler chickens. Parts available in both tray packs and case bags to suit your needs. Leg and thighs, wings, liver and gizzard. Also suppliers of both live and processed ducks. All meats strictly halal. Visit us at 440 Komodo Road Barrett Fork. Or call us at 654-3938 or 361-08. Ya Nabi. Bounty Kings Bounty Castles presents Brand new luxury castles for all events You can contact us at telephone number 749-4342 Or you can also email us at BountyKings1 at gmail.com A-Class Glamour presents to you wholesaling and retailing of premium lines of cosmetics for all skin types, designer jewelry, and many accessories. Brands include ColourPop, Maybelline, Revlon Professional, Urban Decay, Sephora, and many more. To get a hold of these products, you can call Sadiq Khan at 345-5824 or Amira Khan at 759 
You can also visit our Facebook page at A Class Glamour to follow for newly released lines of products. If you'd like to advertise or be a sponsor of this show, please contact Al Hikmat office. Telephone number 1954 986 0158 or 1 325 8276. Or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah and uh, welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. It is indeed a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Dr. Gauss Muhammad and he's also known as Justice Dr. Gauss Muhammad. So, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa barakat. And I would like to let our viewers, of course, know that uh, you are not a very normal, regular person mm -hmm. with your background and your community leadership and your legal background as a lawyer, a judge. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you like to share with our audience, uh, I, I need to let my, our audience know, of course, that Dr. Gauss lives in Pakistan, has a green card, and uh, residence in the United States of America, but has been very influential and is still influential as a former judge in Pakistan, in Sindh, a justice of peace. Uh, he's a man who is a professor of law and uh, Dean Faculty. He is the director of the School of Law at the University of Karachi. So he's a man with a lot of legal background and we know that Pakistan is a very, very interesting country. We got a lot of Islam. We got a lot of interest in politics that go on there. So we would like to learn about that and those issues surrounding the Muslims because as we all know Islam, Muslims, we are one Ummah and it's uh, very important to know what happens in the Muslim world, what happens in the Muslim world. So a person like uh, Justice Dr. Gauss can share a little bit from the legal aspect and from the academic and intellectual aspect. So once more Dr. Gauss, so tell us a little bit about your uh, profession as a lawyer. Actually, I started my practice in 1965, uh -huh. and then, of course, in 1973, I joined judiciary, subordinate judiciary, as senior civil judge and additional district and session judge. And gradually, gradually, I uh, got promotions. I was registrar of Sin High Court, and then, of course, I was elevated to the bench in 1973, and I retired in 2000. Uh, 2000, yes, in January 2000. And thereafter, I did little practice in the Supreme Court of Pakistan because I am enrolled there as Supreme Court Member Bar Association. But now, of course, thereafter, my inclined is inclination was temperamentally towards teaching. So I was uh, I was made uh, head of the Sin Judicial Academy to train subordinate judicial uh, judicial officers. And of course, I established uh, um, the, uh, faculty of law in some schools. And now, currently, Karachi University has established its own school of law, and I am the director of that school as well as dean faculty of law. So basically, the idea is that whatever ri rich experience that I have gained, now I should train, I should share with the uh, new generation. Try to. Uh, try to uh, Im improve their uh, legal knowledge so that they should not face any difficulty and they should become good lawyers, ju good jurists. With the background mm -hmm. as a judge mm -hmm. and with your mm -hmm. sort of experience as a judge, 
uh, definitely that would help you and would be of great help to students who are studying law yes. and uh, becoming lawyers. Mm -hmm. Now that brings us to a very interesting um, mm -hmm. question, Dr. Gauss. Um, Pakistan is an interesting country from the Islamic perspective, mm -hmm. but yet on the other hand, in the political arena, we hear a lot of corruption in the world. Now, you know that Pakistan got a lot of Hufas, a lot of Islamic scholars, a lot of Islamic universities. So, you know, what do you think caused this sort of corruption? It's a very good question. You see, Pakistan gained independence in 1947. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, unfortunately, we spent about seven years just to decide what kind of constitution we are going to have. And then, of course, there are two forces, secular and religious, whether it should be Islamic or it should be purely republic, this and that. Anyway, now, of course, the constitution recognizes Islam as the state religion. It is an ideological state. And, of course, it is a democratic constitution. Unfortunately, we in Pakistan, we did not allow the constitution to function. There had been extra... Uh, judicial attempts like military takeover three, four times. So with the result that progress was disrupted and had there been continuation, there would have been no problem at all. One thing. Secondly, we must give, still I say, uh, importance to mother's education. They are the nurseries. They produce very good scholars. But then, unfortunately, no importance was given to them. And now, of course, there, there is a realization that we will streamline their curriculum. We should encourage these or, um, uh, students from other sites also to learn some modern uh, education like IT, in, in information technology, and other things. Now, I know, I know mm -hmm. that um, our viewers may be wondering mm -hmm. why we're speaking about mm -hmm. Pakistan when this show is about global issues. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I want to make a twist here mm -hmm. so our viewers worldwide will better understand. The fact that there are scholars from Pakistan mm -hmm. that are all over the world. Mm -hmm. You got businessmen from Pakistan who are global all mm -hmm. over the world. You know, Hufas, people who have memorized the Quran all over the world. And that is so interesting. So I think that our worldwide viewers need to have a little understanding and better understanding about Pakistan and Muslims from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, on another hand, again, I see in America, a lot of Pakistanis want to get involved in politics. And I find that very interesting. Sometimes I wonder, though, and I want to ask you that question. So we've got to discuss some important issues here, and it's really a pleasure to have someone like you, a mm -hmm. judge, a lawyer, a man who teaches law Thank you. <laughs> in a country that has a lot of outlaws mm -hmm. also. So, you know, I want to hear that legal, you know, intellectual, academic, balanced conversation with you. And I, I, I want our viewers there to understand, because we have a lot of Pakistani clerics and religious leaders outside in the world, you know, it's important to know where they're coming from because sometimes, you know, the, the rest of the world, I mean, well, not really the rest of the world, but many parts of the world have always looked up to Pakistani scholars when they go to foreign countries. Uh, it's like they're coming from the Muslim country, you know, um, and especially before Internet and before all these international media when you heard of an Islamic scholar coming from Pakistan, whatever he says, you think it's direct from the Quran. And then now with global um, network, with internet, with all the media, now you realize that there are a lot of corruption in Pakistan, in, among scholars, in the politics, and all these political leaders are Muslims. Are these political leaders all Muslims? Well, I, just if you take their names, if you just see their dress and all that, of course they are Muslims. Okay. But unfortunately, unfortunately, in their deeds, I should say they commit misdeeds with the result that sometime 
it becomes doubtful whether they are truthful person or not, whether they are speaking truth or not. And then basically it is a question of intellectual dishonesty. Once you have gained some knowledge, particularly of Islam, and you then you spread the true message of Islam instead of indulging in any kind of sects or any such thing. This is very important. Uh, let me tell you one example. There was a mosque in, uh, in Karachi. There was a dispute. One of the, it was, uh, <coughs> it was taken over by Aukaf department, mm -hmm. but the Aukaf department prior to that the Maulana used to, the Imam used to lead the prayers and all that. Once it was taken over by, by Aukaf department, and the Allah for, for our viewers, Okaf, I mean, department of the mean, government. Uh, yes, Okaf department, but Waqf, it was like that, you see. So it's more like controlled by the state. State through a trust. Good. Okay. So uh, he's, he just wrote, Ya Allah, Ya Rasul, and he started reciting uh, the Rudu Salam after Juma prayers. The persons, namazis, they say, objected to that. He said, no, 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 this is all bidat and this and that. Look at this. That was challenged in the, uh, in the uh, lower court, seeking prayer that this is un-Islamic, this and that. Or it. The uh, civil judge who, who in whose court the case was filed, he decreed the suit. The other party went in appeal. In appeal, it was uh, reversed. There the prayer was, it should be de uh, de declared that there are all Deobandis. And then all in, in appeal, it was sought that it should be declared, no, they are Barelvis. Okay. The matter came to the High Court and was placed before me. Now look at this, I first try to find out, look, all are Muslims. These are madrasas, you see, um, we have respect for Imam Ahmad Raza, we have respect for Deobandi school of thought, Every, they are all Muslims, very good Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, I said, what is, what is the difference? They, they, and honestly, I am telling you, they could not satisfy me. And then, on my own, I did the research. I, I thought that there is mention of four mosques in Quran, including Masjid al-Zarrar, which was demolished by the Holy Prophet Okay. Then I realized that I should issue, settle this issue. So, I thought, first of all, there is no such thing as sect or anything in Quran. All are Muslims. And I took the support of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the ayat, La ikraha fi deen and wa atasimu bihablillahi jamiyam wa la tafarraku. You should not break all this into sects and all this. So I said, yes, this mosque is for all the Muslims. However, keeping in view the government law and control, it should be, the, the management should, should think of uh, the views and of course, uh, those who come in and uh, offer prayers here, they were all Delhi Sauda Grand fam families and uh, otherwise no such thing, everybody is welcome because this is the house of God. So on these things, unfortunately, people fight and all that. This is one aspect. So you have a very big problem with Deobandis and Berlis in Pakistan. There is, yes, no doubt about it. There's wow. no doubt about it. And this should not be. And, 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 and I think to one point they take this outside of Pakistan to other countries yes. in North America. Yes, yes. Wherever they go, yes. they have this sort of extreme propagation. Yeah, yes. And try of, of their own sect. Of their own sect. This is too much. What kind of message you are going to spread to the persons who come to meet you, who come in the, to listen to you and lectures? Do they feel that Islam is the Obandi or the Islam is, is uh, uh, Barilwi? No. Islam is Islam. Yes. That's it. No question of any Barilwi. You got the Quran, you got the yes. Sunnah. The reason you see, kindly see, the reason is that the basic sources of Islamic jurisprudence are Quran and Sunnah. But do you think it's all about power and ego? that the scholars who are behind making, I mean, yeah. everyone has their own choice to mm -hmm. follow Deobandi, any school Khairat, of thought, so any school of thought, Deobandi, and Deobandi is not even a school of thought, Burlui is not a school of no, thought, no. you know, we look at Imam Abu Hanifa, ah, the Madhav, yes, all, all. this is just a sect of their line of interpretation and mm -hmm. teachings, yes. similarly Burlui, the mm -hmm. same line, yes. and um, I, do you think that it's because the the leaders, it's all about leadership, show, ego, power, 
and uh, they create disunity and hate. Now, I have no problem with, as you said, propagate what you believe in, yes. as long as it's right, yes. in your opinion, mm -hmm. but don't build walls and, and make enmity mm -hmm. and disunity with other Muslims around in the world. You see, my simple answer is that after the fall of Baghdad, we close the door of ishtihad. Ishtihad means jihad, you should struggle. And then, now it is the time to go into ishtihad and try to find out the solution to all modern problems in the light of basic sources of Islam, Quran and Sunnah. Of course. This has been permitted. Yeah. Hazrat Maaz bin Jabal anhu, when he was appointed by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as as the governor and Qazi of Yemen, he asked question. Yeah, uh, how you are going to decide? He said, according to Quran. And then said, if if there's no nas or injunction is available regarding that problem in the Quran, holy Quran, then how? Then according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. And he said, if no such in direct injunction is available in Quran and Sunnah, then he said, sir, he said, uh, O oh, Prophet of God, I will decide that uh, matter according to my conscience in the light of teachings of Quran and Sunnah. Yes. The Prophet appreciated that. Holy Prophet appreciated that. This is known as ishtihad, that you have to struggle because. Uh, intellectually. Intellectually, yes. You struggle, you strive, uh, yes. understanding the yes. Quran, the Sunnah, uh, in applying the day to day life, uh, yes. the issues. Uh, this is ishtihad. Yes. Which door should be open now? And I do have a problem with that, um, Dr. Gauss. How could someone sit in America or in the Caribbean, mm. in North America, in another country, with a different issue, a different matter, a different society, a different situation? Yes, we are all Muslims. And they are making a decision based on Pakistan culture, Indian culture, Bangladesh culture, as opposed to making a decision on Quran and Sunnah. And many times I have seen them bring in their culture. They, they, they try to make a decision in a foreign country through the vision of Pakistani culture or Indian culture, Bangladeshi. But I, I don't want to put you in the spot with India and Bangladesh because I know no, that, can, that can be very cultural also. So it's Pakistan. They should be looking at it through a Quran and Sunnah. Yes, they should. And this is the basic requirement. As a preacher, as a teacher or as a scholar of Islam, if you go to North America, you go to Caribbean or any other place in the world, Quran and Sunnah is the same. You should try to be objective and try to give a true message of Islam instead of putting your, uh, putting behind your back all the background of, of sex and all that. Yeah. That, will, that will give a clear message and people will be convinced. Well, you know, we have already been speaking for more than 15 minutes. Could you yeah. imagine that? Because the topic is interesting. Yes, and I'm sure please. our viewers throughout the world yeah. mm. would really enjoy listening to yeah. this conversation. Please. Because most of the times, mm -hmm. people worldwide mm -hmm. and other parts of the world, you know, when they, they either get that corrupted side of mm. politicians in Pakistan, they got one extreme side of the religious people, mm -hmm. or they got another side of some people who have no politics, no religion. But to hear a man like you with a religious background, as a judge, a former judge, mm -hmm. a man who teaches law in Pakistan, mm -hmm. looking at things from a very academic and intellectual point, I think that's going to be very, very beneficial to our viewers. So when we come back mm -hmm. after the short break, mm -hmm. I would like to ask you a few questions for the benefit of our audience worldwide, a little more about why, do, why don't we see some of the religious people or the Islamic educated people in Pakistan get, inv get in involved in the politics or the leadership so that you can get away from corruption and all this sort of, um, you know, on Islamic things at the political level. That's one aspect. And I want to also ask you when we come back after the short break, uh, what is your vision and what do you see and how do you see Pakistani Muslims in America what are they doing, what, what they should be doing um, for the betterment of Islam, what they are not doing, etc. So after the short break, 
we will come back and continue this sort of conversation with Justice Dr. Gauz Muhammad, who is a director of law, a teacher of law at the University of Karachi, inshallah. We're praying for that, right? Well, you see brothers and brothers fighting for money and property. Sisters, brothers, fathers, children. Look at our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 1400 years ago, he said, I don't fear that you guys will do shirk, assign partners to Allah. But my fear is you will envy your brother and your sister for worldly things. When they have these worldly accomplishments, you will envy it. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah. Allah. All praises are due to Allah. Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, 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 Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Become an Al-Hikmah AAA member and get discounts from businesses worldwide. By becoming a member, you will receive a free copy of Al-Hikmah magazine and other publications, emails on current events, recent videos on Al-Hikmah TV, YouTube, lectures, interviews, and much more. You can contact Al-Hikmah services at 954-986-0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikma TV 24 7 online. And those of you who have just tuned in, we have been speaking to Justice Dr. Gauss Muhammad, a former judge in Pakistan and a man of law, director of the School of Law at the University of Karachi, and he's also um, the professor of law and dean faculty of law. So it's really indeed a pleasure to have him with us and we have been discussing some issues pertaining to the legal aspect and the Islamic aspect in Pakistan because we got Muslims from Pakistan who are all over the world and a lot of people worldwide do misunderstand a lot of things that take place in Pakistan and sometimes a lot of people think that everything is all bidder, it's all about culture and um, always oh, corrupted government. So it's really nice to have Dr. Gauss with us on the show. So Dr. Gauss, as we were saying before we went on the short break, um, what do you think and why don't we see more powerful Islamic scholars getting involved in the political arena in Pakistan? You see, the basic thing is there is a thinking among the Pakistani, mo most of the Pakistani parents that if they've got three sons and two are very brilliant, they should be admitted in grammar school, in English medium school. And the third one who is not so really sound and it is Gabi or something he cannot understand. So let him join Madarsa. Of course, after getting education there, he will become Imam somewhere and he will earn something. Now, this is the difference. Why not send a brilliant chap of your own son in the in Madarsa also, so that he should learn Dars and Nizami and other such important uh, subjects, so that a good scholar is produced who can fail. It is a now. The requirement is a comparative study. If you are sitting in some interfaith dialogue, you should know about the Bible, you should know about the Old Testament, New Testament and other uh, 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 scriptures and then you see how it, uh, then you can only say yes, Islam is the universal religion, it is a religion of peace and this is how you have to balance your views. Unfortunately, this is not done with the result that extreme elements 
they just peep into all these things and then they spoil the whole show. Secondly, it is the function of the state also to encourage uh, scholars uh, to learn uh, the to, uh, Islam according to its two spirits. There is in the constitution a provision of Islamic ideological council. Its main job is to see that the laws are made according to Islam and those whatever we inherited from our colonial masters, they are amended and brought uh, into the uh, fold of Islam. But their reports are unfortunately given absolutely no importance. Those reports are placed in the parliament. It is the function of the parliament to look into it and, and accept those recommendations and, and the, and the uh, Islamic ideological council composed of judges, scholars, Islamic scholars, men of letters and all that. And but, but do these Islamic scholars make some impact? Are they vocal? Unfortunately, no. With the result that they go after their own sects, they go after their uh, to preach their own uh, thinking. With do the they allow themselves to be bought over by the politicians or those who have money in different parties? They are for their own selfish motives. They are attracted towards politics. And wherever they gain uh, benefit, they go and join them. I am oh. not naming anyone. Yes. And then at international level, let us come out of Pakistan. At international level, there is a requirement of Ittihadi Ben al Muslimin, there is a unity of Muslims. And we look at this organi OIC, Organization of Islamic State, is there. They are more than, I think, 57 states. They are all Muslims. Why don't they just combine themselves and and Darul Ifta and all these institutions should be established and they should settle the matter, so that differences are narrowed down, uh, and the centuries old differences of sects and all that, those should be effort should be made to minimize them because it's very difficult to eliminate them overnight. Yes, and there is a point I want to I want to sort of. Uh, discussed that you mentioned a little mm. while ago about um, if a man has three sons and two of them are bright, he sends them to learn grammar, grammar, school. grammar and get involved. Grammar and school, English school. English school, politics and yeah. the whole science in the world, etc. And the one that is not very bright, he sends them to madrasa. Mm. So the view here by a lot of people is that, well, the bright guy goes the bright guy goes into the academic world and the guy who's not bright goes into the the islamic world but you know i look at that differently i look at it from another perspective mm -hmm. another perspective where i see that the guys who are already bright they send them into the academic world which is good and they need to or the politics and the science but the guys who are not bright the reason why they need to send them to the madrasa to learn Quran so the Quran will make them bright. Because you know what? Yeah. Quran really instills and opens up your mind and your heart and your intellect and makes you a very bright, smart person. And I, I mean, I want to share with this, I mean, as a former judge and lawyer, that's what I've seen. I've seen this and uh, this is interesting for you to probably take back to Pakistan, you know. So when these guys go in the madrasa, in the darululums, they get bright, they study Quran, but here where the problem is, they are now confined to a syllabus, that is to the a main, thinking. Yes, that is the main thing. So they get bright, they think, because some of these Islamic scholars are more vocal than politicians. They are smarter, they can get up and do a better job than politicians. But what I have seen in some of the darululums and the Islamic institutes in the Pakistan, in the Middle East, wherever, in my travel, Dr. Gauss, throughout the world, there is a problem. The madrasas and the Islamic universities and institutes, their syllabus and curriculum is confined within just here. And it does not open up to the science and the politics and the social and economical aspects in the world while those things are in the Quran. But the universities don't have it. So the scholars coming out from there are stuck to just sitting in a masjid, you, you, you see my point, and not expounding and reaching out 
So therefore, when you have politicians and you have businessmen and you have country leaders who are corrupted, the Imam says, well, I got to simply teach in a mosque and pray. So he does not try to lead his country. That's the main problem. May I add one thing? Yes. Please? You see, in the modern education, particularly in law, there is one paper of modern jurisprudence, English jurisprudence. And then there is also a paper of Islamic jurisprudence. That's it. Now, a few Arabic maxims. Now, that student of law, when he passes out, he is not so well conversant with Islamic jurisprudence mm -hmm. because by just reading one paper for the sake of exam only, he is he is not, he cannot be called himself a good scholar. On the other hand, in madrasa, the they are not taught as to what is the what is, what are the sources of modern jurisprudence. They are taught and uh, the sources of Islamic jurisprudence, and they are very good. With the result, when they go out, they sh they lack. On the one aspect, lack they lack knowledge of Islamic jurisprudence. On the other hand, they lack knowledge of modern jurisprudence. Mm. Today, the requirement is that a student of law or student of madrasa he should be well equipped with the principles of uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the modern jurisprudence principles of modern jurisprudence, as well as Islamic jurisprudence. Let me cite you one example. What are the sources of Islamic uh, modern jurisprudence? That is, conventions and traditions legislation, judicial precedents, all this and the works of great jurists like Blackstone and all that. Islamic sources basic are universally recognized Quran and Sunnah. Then Ijma, Ijtihad, Istidlal, Orf and all that. Their custom is the basic source. Here it is the weakest source because Quran and Sunnah are the basic of sources. Course. So one has to blend all these ideas, principles in his mind to face the world wherever, whether it is an interfaith dialogue or wh whether they are uh, giving some lecture in some, some university and whatever is that. That is what I meant by in the schools, in the Islamic schools, yes. whether it is Arabia or Pakistan mm. or India or Bangladesh, this is a problem. Mm. They simply study, mm. which they have to study Quran and Sunnah and keep it within there, but they need to open up the curriculum yes. and syllabus yes. to the country's law and yes. what is the law as you rightly seen yes. so the students will understand nobody's saying that you have to give up Quran and Sunnah mm. law and jurisprudence mm -hmm. and follow the other law and jurisprudence if it's not realistic because mm. a lot of the laws are man-made and there are a lot of loopholes in it but if you're going out to preach in a community yes. and you're going to be an imam and to teach and meet the society you have to know what law they abide by. So you will know within the Quran and Sunnah how to apply which law and what is not practical. Mm -hmm. There are some laws that are basically just not practical. Yes. You know, very interesting. And, 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 and wherever it is, in the Vatican, in America, mm -hmm. in England, in Rome, you have laws, abortion, the law of the land allows it. Your religious teachings give you the choice of it. So you have to know the, lo the, the country allows this, and I'm using the example of abortion, allows this. Birth control. Right. Yes. But you now, as a religious person, whether Christian, Jew or Muslim, based on health, based on different situations, you, are, you should not do it without a valid reason, but you have reasons. But however, you need to know the laws of the country. And I think those are the issues, and, not, and, and technology, technicalities, other issues. If the minds of the students, while they are studying, are opened up, and, and I mean by the syllabus and the curriculum, I think we may have less issues with this one-track radical mind of Muslims, scholars, and students that just graduate. Now, now. These very same scholars, it takes them 10 and 15 and 20 years to get out of the shell. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get my point? As opposed to a Christian seminary, a Jewish seminary, what they do in these places, they have this sort of training and teaching for the rabbis and the priests of what reality is outside. So when these guys come out, they equip their congregation, what kind of people, 
Nowadays, alhamdulillah, in the Muslim world, and, I, and this got to start from places like Pakistan and wherever, because this is what is happening in the Caribbean, in, in, in South Africa, in England, in America. The masajids and the schools are bringing these scholars from Bangladesh and Pakistan and India, or you know, from Arabia, putting them to teach in these institutions in the West and bringing back that same culture in the West, which is even getting worse. That is the wrong message, unfortunately, is, is spreading, and this is grounded at Islamic and all that. This is not Islamic. No, this, this is not Islamic. You see, mosque is a, mosque is not only a place of worship; it is an institution. It should be treated an institution, and those persons who are who come to preach here, to deliver message of Islam, they should be reasonable they should be logical they should teach whatever and preach according to the true spirit of islam instead of just blocking themselves in the in the shells which they have inherited from their own countries you, you have just named few of them yes and I, you know i'm very 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 concerned dr gauss that the the muslim or the islamic institutions need to add to their curriculum because how could these students go out and be imams? And nowadays our congregation, the Muslim congregation, whether it's in Pakistan, Anywhere. it's in Arabia, mm. your audience are very technologically educated. Yes. We've got so many IT people, mm. so many engineers, so many doctors, so many politicians. And if you don't speak the reality of life and the world, you confuse these people. They come to mosque, they listen. They believe it's a different world. Mm -hmm. They get back in their own world. So until you cannot combine them both and show the reality, it's going to be a problem. I think I think Pakistan need to make a move on that. Do you think Pakistan should? Pakistan. How, how do you get that message pa out pa to the Pakistan, in Pakistan? Pakistan should take the lead, being an Islamic country, yes, ideological country like Israel. There are two countries: Israel and Pakistan, ideological yes. states. So they should take the lead instead of putting whole things in a materialistic term, spiritual aspects should also be given due importance. Of course, of course. We and believe. this is how, this is how with this, if they imbibe true message of Islam, that certainly is going to convince others also. That will be beneficial for the Pakistan, Bangladesh or whatever is that, as well as for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So there will be no extremism, no uh, uh, sort of these things uh, perverted teachings of Islam. Look at what is happening in Iraq and Iran and all that. It's very unfortunate. Of course. This, of is, course. this should not be. So here, the role of ulama, the role of Islamic scholars, Muslim scholars, is very, very important. They should try to bring all these Muslims together so that there should be unity. It is the requirement of the time. Of course. And do you think um, because of that, the students are confined in the Darlulums and the madarsas. So whatever is being pushed into their heads, that's what they believe. Would you think, I mean, we just got like about three, four minutes to conclude and we would have been speaking for 40 minutes. Okay. Could you imagine the time has just yes, gone? Yes, yes. I think Pakistan is an interesting country because of it being an Islamic state, right? And, uh, you know, Muslim country, uh, it's a good example and it can be a, a major and very powerful leading country in the Muslim world if the scholars and the leaders and the politicians would work together and come to a balance and not have one extreme to the other. I appreciate the, this. The point I was getting at Dr. Gauss, do you think that's one of the reasons why some of the students become radical and extremists while they're in the madrasas? Because that's what has been brain, brainwashed onto them? Yes, yes unfortunately, yes to some extent to some extent and the reason is that they are not they should be taught the true spirit of jihad what is jihad it's not that only you shoot someone it's jihad should be free your pen also and other things also in a peace time so and then the as you have very rightly said unless we teach them proper teaching of islam and unity of, uh, uh, according to the teachings of islam and the country itself should take the lead. Unfortunately, leaders 
those who are heading the government whatever they may army military or uh, or uh, uh, civilian they are sometimes shy of talking of islam they should they uh, islam is not only that you should practice offer namaz five times prayer offer zakat or sacrifice and all that or perform hajj once in a lifetime at least no it should be beyond that in mamilat in and uh, punishment uqubat all this islam is there and social life is all there law, uh, islam, law of ethics of islam is there they should try to follow that only then i i i i will say that it is it is an islamic country otherwise just putting name of islam and in the constitution and saying the islamic country that will not be sufficient of course of course that is the main thing they need to be very powerful yes. in a very balanced way yes from the quran the sunnah from yes, the political yes. the scientific the social the economical but they do have it they do have it but they need to bring them all together and create that one power if i would put it yes otherwise you got muslim scholars on one side you got politicians on the other side you mm. got the wealthy on the other side the intellectuals on the other side and mm. that, that that really creates a misbalance uh, unfortunately people at the mass are they are they are so poor and they are deprived of their basic necessities with the result that they are so annoyed with these politicians that they don't take any interest in this let oh. me let me just point example in a seminar i was asked in a university here sir we are we are a democratic country yours is also a democratic country oh, what is the difference why you are underdeveloped i said look abraham lincoln has said that democracy is a government by the people of the people and for the people let me interpret it this your democracy is by our democracy is government buy then it is for the people f o r ours is f a r the third one is government of the people your is is o f ours is o w f with the result that these persons all feudal lords this and that sardar and all they they are elected to the to the assembly and they are shy of making any change they want status quo because their survival is in status quo not in changes okay their survival is the, all about a position it's yeah, not about change in about the country change, yes. and lead in the people yes, and making yes. a difference this is the basic difference yes 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 and it, this and this you can see in some other of countries of course of course in some other countries also actually i see some of the pakistanis doing that when they come to america <laughs> it's all about getting a position in the yes, masjid yes yes it's about getting a position here and yeah, there yes. i mean not just for pakistani i mean other people ah uh, yes but it's not about changes a leadership then can things happen realistic then, and practical then external sources external factors they do isla and they do prevail upon these things they try to and disengage them they try to exploit them with the result that there is no unity of course no practice of true spirit of islam and all that yes yes well dr gaus it has been a pleasure talking Th to thank you thank you very much and, and i'm very grateful to you and you are the and saying and I, i must appreciate the i have been offering namaz here i appreciate the services that you are rendering i have been uh, listening to your lectures also god bless you thank you and god bless the institution that you are heading inshallah inshallah this is how things grow and um, message of islam is spread well thank you again dr gauss it's thank a pleasure you. to have a man like you thank a you former judge of pakistan thank justice you, of peace to mm. be our guest here at the hikmat thank studio you. my pleasure so brothers and sisters it has been again a pleasure and honor and privilege to have the justice dr gauss mohammed to be our guest in al hikmat studio on global issues on al hikmat tv 24/7 online and as you heard before you know he has been a former judge in pakistan a high court judge justice of peace a man of law he teaches law the faculty of law so you know we heard a lot from him from a very legal intellectual academic point of view about pakistan and muslims and scholars so those of you who have just tuned in i think you will have to get back to al hikmat tv again or request a copy of this um interview so you can have a better understanding of a lot of our, the things that are happening in pakistan with the politicians and the scholars who are worldwide 
the good and the bad and the ugly about it because Pakistan is an interesting country with a lot of interesting people and we do not want the truth to be misrepresented by people who got confined, confined minds and uh, are within just a little sector cult. So thank you very much again for viewing Global Issues and Al Hikma TV and we want to say Jazakallah and special thanks, may Allah reward Dr. Gauss for taking the time to be with us here in Al Hikma studio in Florida, USC. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Due to the negative propaganda against the Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it has become imperative upon us to spread the message of the Quran, inshallah. Therefore, Al Hikmat kindly requests your support to pledge and sponsor 100,000 Quran drives on CDs. Join us sponsoring Qurans on CDs for free distribution fees to Bilallah for Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide. You can also sponsor on behalf of family members and relatives that have passed away as Sadiqah Jariyah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al Hikmah TV presents a great way to spread the Sunnah. Have a Sunnah attitude. In the Holy Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in chapter 33, verse 21, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Laqad kana Rasulullahi uswatan hasana that ye indeed in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a beautiful pattern of conduct. Join us for our 100,000 t-shirt drive. For more details or to place an order, contact Al Hikmat Services at 1-800-804-0267 or you can visit us on our website at www.alhikmattv.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al Hikmat has been serving the Muslim and non-Muslim communities for the past 30 years through the publishing and distribution of Islamic literature and radio and also TV programs plus interfaith activities. Due to the demand and many requests of non-Muslims and new Muslims for Islamic literature, we request you to donate generously one dollar fi sabilillah in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards distribution of the Holy Quran, Al Hikmah TV 24-7 online, Dawah publications, Surah and Zikr books, Genealogy of the Prophets, feeding and clothing the poor orphans and the needy, students seeking to study Islam, printing of Islamic publications, our monthly Muslim magazine, One God, Same Religion Dawah brochures, Quranic Arabic reader with Tajweed for students, and also to support our Dawah activities, you can also contact Al Hikmat offices at 954-986-0158 at 954-986-0158 or you can also visit our website at www.alhikmat.com that is www.alhikmat.com you can also make checks payable to Al Hikmat Services Incorporated or you can donate with a credit card on PayPal at www.alhikmat.com We bring some out, right? Well, you see brothers and brothers fighting for money and property. Sisters, brothers, fathers, children. Look at our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 1400 years ago, he said, I don't fear that you guys will do shirk, assign partners to Allah. But my fear is you will envy your brother and your sister for worldly things. When they have these worldly accomplishments, you will envy it. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah. All praises are due to Allah, Allah, Allah. Wafiq Transport Limited, contact 715-6463 or 673-0152. Located at 86 Bornfield Road, Carapi, Chaima. Services include vacuum, septic services, sock pile, sand gravel, etc. Trailers, 
heavy equipment for sale such as flatbeds, drop decks, container trailers, and lots more. Southern Hatcheries Limited. Suppliers of both live and processed broiler chickens. Parts available in both tray packs and case bags to suit your needs. Leg and thighs, wings, liver and gizzard. Also suppliers of both live and processed ducks. All meats strictly halal. Visit us at 440 Komodo Road Barrett Fork. Or call us at 654-3938 or 361-08. Bouncy Kings Bouncy Castles presents Brand new luxury castles for all events You can contact us at telephone number 749-4342 Or you can also email us at BouncyKings1 at gmail.com A Class Glamour presents to you wholesaling and retailing of premium lines of cosmetics for all skin types, designer jewelry, and many accessories. Brands include ColourPop, Maybelline, Revlon Professional, Urban Decay, Sephora, and many more. To get a hold of these products, you can call Sadiq Khan at 345 5824 or Amira Khan at 759 6089. You can also visit our Facebook page at A Class Glamour to follow for newly released lines of products. If you'd like to advertise or be a sponsor of this show, please contact Al Hikmat Office. Telephone number 1954 986 0158 or 1 325 8276. Or you can email us at Al Hikmat at Al Hikmat.com. Truly, he is the one. He has no father or son. Truly.